Welcome everybody to Return to Eberron, Cult of the God Seed. My name is DM Matt in the Hat, <clears throat> and I will be running this adventure here. Uh, today we, uh, I have with me uh, some good friends from across the seas uh, who are going to be playing their characters in Eberron. <clears throat> and uh, so we have with us uh, characters Lana, Don, Silas, uh, Felice, and we are just holding on uh, for Bastian, uh, who is running, I think, a little bit late. Hopefully he shows up at some point. Um, but, you know, sometimes life happens. So if he doesn't, uh, he doesn't end up here, hopefully all is well with him. Uh, last time, <clears throat> excuse me, real quick, uh, we had a bit of a chat to the Fey King, uh, or ex faking as it might be, uh, who had been captured in these Fey runes for over 10,000 years. And he, uh, he basically told us uh, that there was a group of assassins who murdered his wife, the queen, and captured him uh, and took over his noble seat and the fae that we know now are descendants of these uh these assassins and um uh, all is not uh as it should be according to him uh having said that he was able to cast a legendary spell for us to help us figure out what was going on and so he gave us a bunch of information as to uh, the fact that the yuan uh, worship a being that Eberonians know as the Devourer. Uh, the yuan don't call him that, but that's who they worship. And they've had this prophecy going that their ancient kingdom uh, would resurface and that they would be able to usher their their god into the realm of mortals um, so that they could rule once more and this uh, uh, this is the way that they intend to do this is to connect Delcor a uh, a plane that has been sort of banished uh, to the other side of space back to Eberron and uh, allow the Cori, uh race of demons and bad things uh, into Eberron uh, and also usher their god into Eberron, which would be bad. Uh, we also uh, sort of got reintroduced to the fact that there is this mysterious old woman uh, or female uh, who's very powerful who none of us really know who it is at this stage anyway who has an emerald phylactery and has allied herself with both the drow and with the yuan-ti uh, this alliance seems well, these alliances together seem very unusual and seems very powerful uh, in the fact that, you know, she obviously must have some sway uh, and she's behind some of this stuff. Uh, so we don't know just yet exactly who this is, uh, but uh, maybe one of you, if you've been watching, has figured it out. Maybe we will see. Uh, certainly we'll find that out as time goes by. We left the last session um, knowing that we needed to visit Ereg the Hunter uh, and he, uh, we did so and he arranged after being paid 1,000 1, gold by Silas to have a, a skilled hunter uh, basically come and show us the way to the dream serpent breeding grounds 
And today uh, we will start off the session meeting that skilled hunter. However, before we launch into that, I would like everyone to introduce their characters and to just give us a sentence about, you know, what they're thinking or experiencing or anything like that to, you know, help frame the start of the session and then we'll get started. So we'll go uh, to Lana, then to Don, then to Silas, then to Felice. Uh, so that will be our order. So go ahead guys uh, and introduce yourselves and your characters and just a sentence about what they're thinking or doing uh, at this stage as we're about to meet this mysterious hunter. Righto, I'm Mary playing Lana May and um, Lana right now is just kind of in this like, hey, we got another hard puzzle piece, so she's excited because she's definitely homesick, but she's like, hey, let's just keep, we got direction, we just gotta get to this hunter and go on to the next phase and hopefully get home. Indeed. I will be playing the role of Don, and his frame of mind is uh, snakes. Why does it always have to be snakes? <laughs> Absolutely. Move it to Silas. Well, my name is Corey, and I'll be playing Silas Phoenix tonight. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's uh, Silas is in a very weird place with all this. He doesn't have any connection to any of them really any longer. And just like Lana, really just wants to go. <laughs> Except that we haven't solved the problem about these nightmares yet. Yeah, and the only reason that he's here is because his children are affected by the problem. Indeed. Very good. Finally, Felice. So, my name is Chris, and I am playing Felice Kofi Jones. Um... Felice right now is riding a little bit of a high from meeting the Fey King and having some of these pieces kind of fall into place. And um, she's been a bit obsessed uh, in any spare time since leaving him uh, with <laughs> reorganizing her notes and pouring over things and just, you know, really studying every nuance and angle that could possibly be there <laughs> okay very good all right um uh, well thanks guys uh for introducing your characters um where we're going to meet this hunter is at the manticore's tail where we've been staying um we've received word from eric that he will meet us there um and he describes this person as a uh, quality example of male prestige, uh, but hiding under a cloak. <laughs> he says, you'll know him when you see him. Okay. Interesting. Uh, he oh, that's says, <laughs> yes, he says, um, we here in Stormreach, uh, know this hunter by the name Kilgore. 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 Right. The man that I have paid for. Um. Indeed. All right, yeah, so Silas is very impatiently waiting. Um, I like the way that you have this set up. He would definitely be on the other side of the table like that. Um, so, he, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's just sitting there kind of doing the like tap your fingers on the table thing. Um, he's not having an ale or anything like that. He doesn't drink any longer. Um, he, yeah, waiting impatiently and all right, so um, where uh, I put, uh, let's see, just, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I've put his picture over here. Now, uh, what you see of him um, just right at this uh, stage 
you see uh, as my game is taking ages to load here um, Roll20 is being very slow for me today uh, here we go oh service unavailable fantastic all right we'll keep going um, so yeah what you see of him is basically a man in uh, and looks quite strapping um, but he is obscured by a heavy billowing cloak that is hooded uh, and the hood uh, obscures his facial features uh, he is currently um, drinking a flagon of milk um, you can see the the froth of the milk um, tainting his lip and in fact as you watch him he will wipe the froth off his milk uh, and uh, he will uh, look up uh, now you still don't see his full face but something uh, something about the cut of his jaw seems a little bit familiar to Don and it's Don to whom he calls out to and he says Don Treeman uh, it's been a long time you seem to have a few more grey hairs than last time I saw you. Uh, you seem to have me at a disadvantage. You rec recognize me, but I, I nearly recognize a part of you at all. Uh, he says, Well, I wasn't expecting to see you here. Um, I... I been here for a while now and he lifts the the hood off his head and this is someone that you definitely recognize and it's it's chance it is chance oh okay. chance oh god really <laughs> Chance. <laughs> when I last saw you, you were practically a pup. <laughs> he says, yeah, the, uh, the years haven't done me all that well either. Uh, I probably have a few more gray hairs too, but this noble warrior, well, I've been out here in Zendrick for some time and have been hunting noble beasts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, hold on there. If you're going to try hunting me, I'm going to put up quite the fight. He says, oh, I have no intention of hunting you, Treeman. <laughs> you said noble beast. Get, get me a rightfully confused here. Uh, yes, uh, Ereg, the man that, uh, that uh, came and uh, secured my services, he's... Uh, He's a little more underhanded than what I'd like, uh, and uh, certainly has butchered uh, many noble beasts of the wilderness that I would uh, I would rather see uh, slain in a humane manner. He's not exactly uh, the most humane of men. Uh, these some of these beasts are noble indeed. He says, as you, I'm sure, are very familiar with, being. Who you are. Well, it is good to hear that some of my respect for the greatness of nature is rubbed off on you. He says, indeed. And uh, you notice that there is something new about him. Um, he has a wedding ring oh. on his finger. Uh, it is a band of oh live God. wood. Uh, and uh, there is an amber gem uh, encrusted in the live wood. Chance, I, I can't help but knowing you have some uh, chains about your hand there, Donald. Gesture in the, the way of the ring. Uh, he flexes and he says, oh, yes. Yes. Uh, you might sometimes remember, the hunter, sometimes the hunt today. Eh? You might remember Selena Night Whisper. Her and I, well, we have an understanding. 
<laughs> this is a wicked smile. <laughs> You old dog, you. Congratulations. Uh, in fact, she's the reason why I came here. Uh, many years ago, she started to... Uh, I just have this sense. The Druid Circle sent her out here um, after she reported what she felt. Uh, and um, they, actually, uh, they actually sent her here. And uh, I was still her subject at the time. Um, and uh, and she invited me to come and join her and, and protect her. And through that process and the many adventures that we have had while we've been here for the last three and a half years, uh, we kind of, uh, yeah, ended up tying the knot, you might say. So you found love. He very clearly said, tie the knot. <laughs> if it was love, they would have gotten married or something, right? <laughs> no, like Lana would have like kind of hurried over her, just kind of like, hi, nice pleasure to meet you and whatnot, just in the excitement of, okay, and, this is the person we are going to And he'll say, oh, Don, you dog. Yeah, you, you, you seem to like keeping the, uh, the company of younger women. <laughs> just like awkward laughs like <laughs> no the least raises an eyebrow at that watch yourself chance that donald say conspiratorially <laughs> she's single <laughs> yeah, she's something <laughs> oh well, well it's not for me to judge he says uh what how, how is uh how is that other uh, other young girl? Uh, what was her name? And he sort of uh, just you know looks up for a second. It was uh, hey hey you right? Oh yeah, she's or last I saw her, she was she was fine. Oh, you're a friend of hers. She was being I rude. met her. We're in the same guild. Oh, uh, excellent. Well. Well, maybe not excellent. Uh, the guild didn't really treat me very well. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. And Silas would look at yeah, Lana. Not anyone either. Actually, I think it's been disbanded. So. I heard this as well. Whereas Cubius or whatever his name is. Um, Cubius was his name. He like disappeared basically. Dick face. I mean, yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, that man, he just uh, didn't know when to stop, did he? He was certainly in over his head. Most well, certainly. Yes, he was. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, it's been a while. Uh, so, look, I've been out here hunting for the last three and a half years. Um, and, uh, it was me that, uh, that took on this job from Eric. He, he gave me, uh, he gave me a whole 200 platinum for this. The two, sorry, he gave me, uh, he gave me 200 gold for this. Uh, that's, that's quite a richly sum. Oh, well, I was just like, oh, snap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but she's not saying anything. She just kind of looks at Silas and the... <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll have to... I think I'm going to have to have a conversation with that man. It's uh, a little nice sum for you there, there, there Kill, or, or Chance, or whatever. You can call me Chance. Uh, that is who I still am. Although these people, uh, you know, I, I had to take on a new name. Chance, it, it's not the type of name that gets you jobs <laughs> in the wilderness he says uh, people don't seem to like that so i had to take on the name of a hunter so i took my last name kilgore yeah well do you you do know what we're going to discover i i do and i know the way uh i have a few things to tell you before we go 
Um, you know, I'd rather you be on the up and up as far as what we're walking into. I don't know why you want to go there to the Dream Serpent breeding grounds, but you know what? Our business is our own, no chance. Very well. Uh, so, just so we're unraveling an evil plot chance. We'd love to tell you all about it on the way there. <laughs> I mean, it sounds good. I like unraveling evil plans and defeating evil. This you would know do, about me. Ch chance, do you and this woman have any children? Uh, no, sir, we do not. Lucky you. Do Donald Sanders Bethel, you're about to get four. <laughs> <laughs> we have been far too busy for the likes of children. Uh, let's just say that uh, things are not all good out here. Uh, it's been it's been a hard hard time, but uh, we've survived, and that is why I am going to be your hunter today. Anyway, as I was saying. Uh, so, Dream Serpents, a few things you should know before we leave. Uh, number one, they are sacred to the drow. And if we go trampsing across their sacred lands, they're likely to take offense. And, you know, not all drow are bad and evil, he says. Uh, some of them are noble creatures indeed, and I even, uh, have made some friends amongst them. And I do not want to you know, put that into jeopardy. Uh, and certainly I would be very careful about traipsing across their sacred grounds. Uh, and certainly the more of these creatures that would meet their demise, the more likely it is that we're going to be ambushed by uh, drow warriors. And let me tell you, they are no uh, weaklings. Yes. So then I guess we use your connections to get safe passage. Ah, uh, yes. I uh, should be able to arrange that. Not a problem. Of course, I did come prepared for that eventuation. Yes. We're very capable, Chance. I have no doubt, sir. Well, you said you had a few things. Is there another? Uh, he says, well, that's the main thing. Uh, the drow, uh, have been quite irritable of late, he says. Uh, and, uh, you know, especially, uh, especially more than what, you know, I've come to expect. Uh, even I, having befriended some of them, have come under attack from them more than once on my travels. It seems very odd to me. They seem to be on the surface more, and but they should be, you know, underground defending their cities. But I don't know, some, something's, something's changed, he says, in the time that I've been around. Something's a mess, and that's... That is what it is. Um... He says, even if I do reach out to my contacts, there's not 100% certainty that another group of drow won't take offense, he says. Um, that's kind of what I'm saying. However, don't worry. I'm here to protect you. <laughs> Our hero. Yes. Oh, yes, I am, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Lana, I don't think Lana's ever interacted with him, so this is, he, this is very humoring. <laughs> Don't Don say, hold, hold up, hold up, Chance. Felice is the single one, not Lana. <laughs> Don, Thanks, I'm not Don. flirting with him. <laughs> and what a lovely example of uh, elven descendant you are, he says, looking over and smiling a big grin. Over at Felice. There she you blushes. go. Keep those arrows in. She right blushes and, and looks away, like completely. <laughs> Aw, yeah. But Aww, I, yeah. But I'm so, I, I'm sorry to tell you, Felice, but I am also taken. 
Lucky, lucky you, Felice. Yeah, keep your hands to yourself, Felice. <laughs> it seems just as well. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, uh, Silas looks over to his metal friend, I'd say. Friend I use very loosely. And uh, says, it looks like you're activated now. Are you, uh, are you with us? Oh, oh gods. Why did no one turn the key? I was so alone. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Well, I'm sorry. Just... Yeah. Welcome with us. Oh, I, I did. I, I thought I must have turned it the wrong way. Must Never be. turn it the wrong way. <laughs> he says, oh. Uh, is this the famed, uh, is this the famed Warforged of, of the, uh, Adventurers Guild that I never got to meet, Chance says? Oh, oh, no, no, this isn't Shard, this is Bastion. Oh, well, that's Wait, I thought, I thought this was Shard, <laughs> I thought he just changed his name. No, no, Don, you, you know Shard, Shard, well... She, she like kind of like catches herself where she's like gonna say like um you now like he has more sh like newer shinier parts but like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to like just not say that so she's like no Shard has uh, he's, he's, he's constructed differently yes yeah, Shard is a very honorable warforged that I have a ton of respect for <laughs> yes I'm sorry that you do not recognize me. I'll have to redouble my efforts. He says, well, uh, it's nice to meet you, fine sir. And what would be your name? I'm known as Bastion. Oh, what a resilient name that is, he says. My name is Chance, though those around here call me Kilgore. Because, you know, Chance isn't the type of name that gets people hired for jobs. Can I call you Casey? Wonderful. Well, when can we be off, Chance? Well, you can be off straight away, if that is your wish. And Silas would look at the group, knowing that this is his charge, in theory. Um, and says, is there anything that we have to get together before we leave? Uh, a peace offering to the drow wouldn't hurt, he says. I mean, I have I have connections, but... Do uh... <laughs> they like cheese? <laughs> the, the question that you should be asking is do they like honey um <laughs> yeah true <laughs> so we leave the honey with the no oh wait we, we yeah we do have the honey that we extracted uh, Lana has a few jars on her and a few bottles of taste as well and she just kind of she's like we have plenty of honey some raw and unprocessed and, uh, or like no like it is straight from the hive and then there's some that has been jarred and then i have some taste do you know what their taste is then what would well they're they're drow don't they like like spiders yes generally, I... generally. really Ooh. Uh, but they, he said, so yeah. Chance is well, like, on that. Chance is like, not all of them like spiders. Some of them like snakes, which is the reason why their, their sort of ancient sacred grounds are those of these dream serpents. Uh, they, they hold them among great regard. Uh, there are those among the drow that do revere spiders, and there are those among the drow that do revere scorpions. But uh, the ones that I'm familiar with revere snakes. Wait, nice. we're going into the, the snake area, so... so can you give them a fresh one? I, I don't think they'd be too happy if we went into their area and picked one of their snakes for them and gave it to them. That, that seems kind of cheeky. He says, look, the more, the more harm you do in the area, either to the environment that we're going in or to the serpents within that area environment... Uh, the more likely it is that we're going to be attacked by drow. Uh, my recommendation is that we don't harm the, the dream serpents. 
What what yeah. what are you going out there for? Let me ask you this. I mean, I I accepted this job, but I I'd like to know what I'm getting myself into. And because Corey was in here for a lot of this, just kind of looks over to Felice. <laughs> Well, we think the dream serpents are causing nightmares. So the kids, the children in Sharn and over on the mainland are having these horrible nightmares. So far, all the evidence points to these dream serpents. So we need, we need to figure out what's going on. Um, we think the Yuan T may be doing something with them to connect the realm of dreams with our own. The Yuan T, he says. Well, and we it... think that's what's causing the nightmares. So he says their activity here in Stormreach has certainly increased of late, uh, under the guise of the uh, the sewer serpents. Gutter serpents. Ah, uh, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> I see two things at once. Let's round up the on T and this city. We'll destroy the gutter serpents and we'll take the on T slaves over to the drow and release them. The drow will be happy, the on T will be moved, and we'll have a way in. So, Chance, what's what's the connection what what is exactly between the drow and the dream serpents uh, one second uh mary could you mute yourself for a minute um just when chris is talking for some reason uh, you're picking her up um and reverbing her i don't know why um so thank you um your question is, what is the connection between the Dream Serpents and the Drow, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what their relationship is. Right. Um, so, like like he said earlier, um, the Drow, there's like, there's many different types of Drow, or they follow distinct um, sort of worship patterns. Um, there's drow that worship the spider god, uh, the serpent uh, god, and the um, scorpion god. And um, they, they tend to have this working relationship that they tolerate each other for the purposes of being able to defend their cities if they if their alliance was to crumble so would their cities because they're under mm. siege um however you know they all have a different lifestyle um so the serpent um the serpent honoring ones uh basically the dream serpents are sacred to them um because the dream serpents have uh, many colored scales and the leader of the dream serpents the Andron Jinyi uh, is a creature of great power that the drow respect and they worship the Andron Jinyi they uh, they lay themselves down at the Andron Jinyi's feet oh well feet for want of a better word uh, it's a serpent after all um, sure and coils yes <laughs> yeah. he says um well, the androgyny as far as i'm aware is a very noble creature and i think if we were to find it him her uh not sure he says uh if we were to find it um i think we would be able to speak with it uh the other dream serpents don't tend to have language but uh the drow uh that worship the androgyny they tend to the land the environment that the dream serpents live in 
Um, they also do take some of them um, and refine their uh, their dream uh, magics. Um, their dream weavers, uh, a lot of them, and so they uh, the weak and the elderly of the dream serpents are taken by the drow and harvested uh, in a you know in a humane type of way uh, to uh, to allow the, them to um, to to gain their their power. Um, so they're like I guess almost druidic in the nature that they tend to these uh, dream serpents and their environment. Uh, and they so do it... so out of reverence. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. Well, that kind of sounds to me like we we need to convince the drow to get us an audience with the dream serpents. Uh, that sounds to me like probably the best plan however convincing them of that that we mean no harm may be harder than you think they certainly do not trust outsiders i mean their cities are under siege and certainly they're not treated very well here on the surface under siege from what uh the umbra which are oh. basically demon creatures from the underworld Oh, so well. Maybe if we help them stop that from happening, they'd... I, I maybe maybe chance didn't say it uh, loudly enough. Don will point to one side. Demon points to the other side. Creatures. <laughs> Lana's shaking her head at the notion of helping on demons. Like, no, 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 no. You don't want to do that. <laughs> well, this isn't gonna uh, be easy. I guess we need to figure out uh, some trade goods or peace offering, like you said, suggested. What do uh, they like? Wow. What do they need? You said you know some of these people. What do they like and what, what do they need? Okay. Um, so, um, he says, obviously, the their underground struggle is pro probably one of their primary concerns um basically um uh the um uh the monsters uh, which are basically an army of beholders, mind flayers, and aberrations <laughs> are at their gates. Um, and um, do they share this underworld together, or have they invaded them? They share it together. Yes. Uh, so he doesn't know the whole story, but he'll tell you that much. He says that you know, obviously that's that's as it is. He says, I'm not sure whether we can really do anything about that. Um, you know, it's it's crazy, crazy down there. Um, he says, what we might be able to do is, well, number one, obviously revere the dream serpents and not harm them. But uh, also, they tend to like fine goods, uh, things like fine wines. Um, that sort of thing, uh, anything, uh, also, you know, any connection, any information about their past, they seem to have lost, uh, track at some point, uh, of their own history, he says, um, I'm not exactly sure what happened, um, apparently they had found some sort of well of energy and then all of their knowledge of that sort of left and they only you know there's songs that they sing about it but none of them really understand what it means uh, so if we could figure out what happened I mean that would be that would be like total revelation right. to them I'm not sure how we would figure that out though 
He says in the short term, with what I can think of, probably fine wines, uh, anything that's not of Zendrick itself would probably be where you start. And, you know, if you were to offer the chance that, you know, anything that you do find while you're here, obviously you're looking around ancient sites. I'm guessing this is not the only one you're looking at. If you were to find any information pertaining to that and you promised them that you would tell them anything you found, that would probably put you in good stead, he says. That's perishing. I like it. I mean, that that's the way I roll, he says. No. A breath of fresh air. No chance. I'd certainly have no problem sharing with them if I learn uh, anything. It's yeah, just going to be right getting them to trust us. Else? You know, that's going to be the hardest thing. We can say whatever we want, but people have been saying things for millennia. Action. Right. Agree. Action makes plus. Yes. So, well, let's, uh... Wish we would have known of this, because we could have brought some supplies with us, but this has been a very interesting adventure, so... Not so much. Um, Lana says she has some taze. I know that comes from Sharn. Would you be willing to part with that, Lana? And thing it takes. So, what is this taze, he says? It's an alcoholic beverage. It's uh, <laughs> rather killing. Any he, and he laughs. Uh, <laughs> Long well, like nervous chuckles as she's like already in the process of rolling out her portable hole just to be, like hop and be like uh, or no she would be pulling it out and like the the portable hole but it's still rolled up and she'd be like I can pull out a bottle if you want to see. Uh, sure, he says. Why not? I won't drink any, but <laughs> and so she does. Hops into the hole. Rummages just for a moment and is like, ta da! As this like bottle pokes up out of the hole in the hand. Hmm. Link takes a look and he says, oh, very well. Um, yeah, I thought that would probably at least get us get us a conversation rather than a battle. And how many of those bottles do you have there, Lana? I believe. I think it's either three or five. So not a ton, but. I'm looking, I'm enough, trying to pull enough to quick. probably get an audience with the uh, the people we need to, right. like a peace off. Yep, that'd work. So let's oh, two now. two bottles of taste. Ta da! <laughs> Five jars of honey. Well, nonetheless, better than zero. If we, if we could find us a wizard, we could cast enlargement on it, right? <laughs> If only we still had a wizard around. <laughs> what? You don't... Never mind. Yeah. Um, well, why don't we be off? I, uh, I'm really missing home. So let's be done with this. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we're heading off. <laughs> Very good. Onward. All right. So let us grab all of us then. I don't know why Felice is bigger than everyone else. Oh, man. I was wondering about that. Okay. Well, uh, Lana May is bigger, too. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, obviously, they've uh, just been stretched a little bit. Uh, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let me quickly... Um, so let me quickly show you the bird's eye view of the old growth forest um so if you zoom out of this map here this is the old growth ruins a bird's eye view um there's a bunch of stuff in there i just want to really quickly show that to you so that you've got that in your heads so as you can see there's areas one through eight so it's not too difficult to remember uh area one is there in the middle two and three are up to the north 
four, five, and six are up, up to the east. Uh, eight is down to the southwest, and the seven is south. Uh, so, sorry, north uh, west. So that is what it is. Uh, just so that you have a little bit of an idea of where we're going and what winds are doing and things like that. Um, then I will take us then to this map here. Numero uno. Number one. Uh, and I might zoom in here so that it's a little bit better for my stream. There we go. Uh, and uh, let me paste all of our tokens here. Zoop. Wow, chance is huge. <laughs> uh, so he, he leads us for some time, um, and he takes point. Uh, I'm imagining that Bastion and Silas will be uh, sort of up up with him or close to him and the others maybe uh, towards the back uh, oh. unless someone wants to take the rear either way it doesn't really matter uh, and while this is happening let me go here to this one um, so uh, I'm just going to read out what it says here as far as travel and such so the travel uh getting us here um we came by a riverboat because uh, that was the quickest way um we found a small path that led directly into the breeding grounds uh, we saw a few animals or, and lone dream serpents that left them alone uh, as per chances directions um, just before entering the breeding grounds proper you encounter a carved wooden marker bearing written writing in a strange language the markings are in drow and uh, chance will be able to uh, tell you what they say even if anyone else cannot but Felice should probably have something at least with drow and I think at least one of you have a helm of comprehend languages anyway but that would be done uh yes you will be able to definitely read that uh the ground that you're about to walk on is holy and that the that trespassers will be punished severely uh that is what that says um and uh so that's that and what do we got uh uh, basically you're uh, you're looking for actually what I'll do is this I won't put you on this map we'll put you on the third one because you're specifically looking or second one second one because you're specifically looking for drow so you know what let's put us up here instead that seems like the more thing to do there we go. while that's going on Bastion would have cast aid on himself Don and Lana okay. third level spell okay uh, 10 bonus hit points yep so for those couple of people you have 10 <laughs> bonus hit points no it's five it should be five right uh, he's casting oh, no, at a higher yeah. level All right, so you guys are, uh, you know, walking. Um, you've just sort of uh, seen this uh, marker and deciphered it, and Chance directs you around it, uh, and instead down a, a sort of rough path, um, which without him deciphering it or without someone deciphering it, you probably would have never found it. Um, and having walked down this rough path, 
uh, you do see um, ahead that uh, there are some drow along the road. Um, now, a few things that are unusual. Number one, it's the middle of the day. Uh, drow don't tend to come out during the day um, and they seem to be gathering around uh, this area uh, protecting this area chance will be up the front here and he will hold up his hands and he will have uh, one of the bottles of taze in it uh, and he will call out and speak in drow uh, to these drow and he will say um, something along the lines of um, uh, my name is uh, Kilgore I have I have come with these uh, foreigners to your lands asking passage uh, without harm and we have come with offerings. Uh, and uh, you see that the drow um, uh, as he's looking at them and after he says what he says he comes back a step and he says guys those don't look like serpent worshippers to me and you can see that the drow are like looking at each other and they're pointing at each other and they're pointing at the group and you can see that uh, his speech hasn't moved them In fact, uh, they don't seem especially friendly. And he's saying to you um, that these do not look like serpent worshippers, these particular ones. Because I have you no know, idea what they are. So what do we want to do? As we have a um, few moments here before something happens, um, how many, how many people do we see before us? Okay, the people that you can see are labelled. Uh, you see this resilient priestess, this drow warrior, this drow mage, and this priestess multicaster. Obviously, you don't know their names because they don't... <laughs> In-game, they, do <laughs> they don't have their titles underneath. However, you do see that... Uh, the ones that are like the mage and the two priestesses, they are wearing robes. The two priestesses are obviously females. The mage and the warrior are both males. Uh, you know that drow have a caste system and obviously females are the higher level, uh, higher caste uh, of their society. Um, and they're certainly not looking like they're moved by Chance's uh, speech, even though he's spoken to them in drought. These are not your people, are they, Chance? He says, uh, I don't, one, I don't recognize them, and two, they don't look like serpent worshippers to me. That they're, 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 they're not, they don't have the same markings. In fact, he has enough time to say amongst them are both ser serpent and scorpion worshippers and why they would be out here in the wilderness together I and don't during the day know. indeed all of this seems very unusual Chance, can we... with the dawn circle of comprehend languages can you hear what they are saying to each other the drow that is uh sure um do you want to make me a perception check and see how clearly you can hear it They are speaking underneath their breaths. Uh, you can hear just a little bit about what they're saying. And they're saying, who are these people? Why are they here? We should just kill them before they get any further. If they get to the others, there'll be trouble. You don't know- Oh, so they're having the same conversation that we're having. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you can hear that. 
Lana would ask Chance when the last time, when was the last time he came here? Uh, he hasn't been here for over a year. He hasn't been there for what? Over a year. Hmm. Righto. I I turn to Chance and um, Chance, can we can we just leave and find another route? Do you know another way? He says without treading on their ancient lands. Uh, not really. Uh, we could try. Well, I... Not. Just like another way to a different group. Uh, another access point? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, I, I can probably do that. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't seem as cocksure as he was a few moments ago of when you ask him that question. Yeah. This... You, you okay without insight you can even just read this is the way he knows <laughs> wonderful well chance you brought us here and now i guess we're gonna have to deal with what we have yeah. because these may not be may not be the draw we're looking for <laughs> These are not the drow you are looking for <laughs> <laughs> i'm so glad we got that <laughs> Um, and, mm. uh, but, uh, these may be the draw that we have to go through to find the people that we're looking for. All right. Um, Lana would point be like, exactly. So you start to like backtrack. Um, and roll initiative. <laughs> Bastion is like a statue, resolute and stout. Absolutely, he is. Alright, so. Oops. Oops. Yeah, I got it. Uh, now I have to go and find. So, what have we got? Not Did we forget the wine bastion again? We better wind him up to be sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not a bad plan. Uh, where are we? This one, which has plus four. So he's at 19. Uh, let's see, add turn. 19. And then we've got two priestesses and one mage. The mage has plus two. So I'll add his turn in. Add turn. Five. And then the priestesses have plus two as well. And they yeah, got Steve is not alive. Uh, yeah, he rolled perception, but he didn't roll turn nineteen. All right. Uh, yeah. So I just need I just need a an initiative for. It's been 
It's been very slow for me today, so. Yeah, my internet's been really weird today, too. It's just rolled 20. Everything else is fine. <laughs> Good. sort that descending all right so first we have police um so for let me just real quick uh do this uh just to facilitate um being able to retreat uh and such let's do this let's put us Let's put us here. Yeah, I think that they're just snapping these. Um, that's all right. They're just snapping, which is why they're a certain size. So, Felice, um, what are you doing? Uh, I've sort of changed our locations just a little bit, just so that we can. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Felice is actually going to climb one of the trees. Um, and position herself and ready her bow. Make me athletics check. A witch? Athletics check. Athletics. Ah. Okay. Wait, where's the... No, it's this one. I almost pushed the performance button instead. Right, so you can't climb the tree, Felice. Um, so you, 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 like, you walk up to the tree and you, like, see that the closest branch is quite high and you jump up to try and grab it. And, you, and I can't reach you it. You can't reach it. Uh, there are other trees around, but you've just used your action to try and climb this yeah. one and you didn't succeed. So I will settle for taking cover for now. And, um,. Reading my bow. Okay, your bow is readied. Okay, um, so our little priestess here. So she's going to cast uh, Conjure Animals. Uh, so that's the that's this one here. It's going to cast Conjure Animals. Zoop. Hmm. That's quite a few things. And then the other one is um, the other one is going to use her summon demon ability. To summon the dryer. Then it's the Drow Warrior's turn. Right, he has a hand crossbow and a short sword. Um, and he has how much movement? 30 feet. Okay. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Yeah, sure. He'll move to here. And he will attack Chance twice with his short sword. Because 
this chance is the one that spoke. Okay. Very good. Chance needs to make two saving throws because he just got hit twice. Um, so let me just access Chance's sheet here. One moment. Where are you, Chance? What type of say are these? Uh, Constitution throws. saving throws he's making. Right. So, uh, because of aura protection, mm -hmm. he will he gets a bonus. You know, one to my charisma modifier, which is oops, sorry. Come on, cheat. He will still uh, fail one and pass one, but thank you yeah, for that. Up two, yeah, yeah. Um, so plus two on saves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he'll still fail one, and when he does, uh, he is going to, what does it say? He has failed by five or more as well, and he falls unconscious. Uh, you don't believe that he was hurt enough to make him fall unconscious? What you believe is that he must be poisoned. Um, there is poison dripping off the blade. Mm -hmm. uh, one second. He has 81 health. Okay, so 81. And he has taken a total of see here no so 18 damage and he is unconscious all right uh so that is the warrior's turn lana um chance of whom you know is quite one resilient individual has succumbed to drow poison what do you want to do Return the favor by pulling out her dagger, using her act to get the poison, and then removing herself between these three. And yeah. Alright. Very good. Done. Yes. Oh, one of them moved. Don, seeing the 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 whole thing kind of coming apart at the seams, is going to go for his grab bag of powerful druidic magic. Wave his hands and call forth a sudden burst of hail from the sky in the form of ice storm. Okay, what's the area of ice storm? Twenty foot radius, forty foot high cylinder. 20 foot radius. Yeah, let me. All right. So where where do you want that? Let's see, I'm gonna throw it to sort of get all of them. Yeah. The uh, the two drow and the big spider in the back, and the drow up in the cliff. The uh, three spiders next to us, and the one right next to us will be out of range. Oops. Let's do so going four four. Like this, yeah. Does that look right? Not quite. Goes down to here. Yeah, it looks right. Cool. Good. Um, and they all need to make deck saves. All right. So first of all, we will do the Drow Worry. The Drow Worry is out of reach. The Dryder. 
Strider has a plus three. <laughs> the Drider fails. The two priestesses. One succeeds. That will be the resilient one. And the mage. Fails. So they all failed except for the resilient one. And they're taking all of that damage and half for the resilient one. So uh, yep. 25. And the only the 46, if it's... Is, is the resilient uh, against a damage type or just... Uh, the, so I've, I've just named it because she has an item on her, but you don't know that yet. Okay, so that'd be just flat probably then. So, I don't know, I'm guessing. You you know. <laughs> uh, I know. That's okay. Um, so the Drider, let me put in, has that many hit points and has taken... Uh, has taken 25. Um, the... We haven't hit the spiders. That's not a thing. Where are we? Sorry got so many things here. The mage has that many hit points and has taken that many damage. And the two, the casters have that many hit points. She has taken, what's that, seven, seven and five, which is 12. 13 and she has taken 25 sorry I should have uh, should have had that sorted uh, alright so they've all taken that damage is there any other effect other than them taking damage uh, that would be it alright uh, if anyone else walks in there will they also get affected by that it's, uh, it's an instant thing all right, so it's just so quickly as the clouds form and the massive chunks of ice fall from the sky, they disperse. Okay, very good. Uh, it is gone. Lovely, Silas. Then, Silas. Sorry, is there? Don will also be bravely hiding behind police. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bravely hiding behind the archaeologist. Very good, Silas. What are you doing? <laughs> so Silas will move. That's not what I want to do. Give me a point of help. You roll 20. Right here. And as a bonus action, I'd like to cast Compelled Duel on this guy. Compelled Duel? Yep, Compelled Duel. Here, I'll put it in the thing. Do I have it exactly the way it should be? Yeah. second here. Okay, and no, well, no, I hit the wrong spot. I hit the wrong spot. Okay. Sorry. No, that's still. okay. It happens. I'm sorry. Yeah, because I was reading another spell and I thought it was on that one. Sorry, this is the right It's spell. a wisdom save and it's against this drow warrior, yes? Mm-hmm. It's against this, this guy right here. Alright. Drow warrior, and he has plus one, no, plus four to his wisdom. I'll be four. Nineteen. There's no effect. Yep. There is not. So seeing that that didn't work, I'm going to hit him in the face! And I would like to attack him, please. Absolutely you may attack him. He has studded leather on and a shield. Wonderful. You hit for six slashing damage. Mm -hmm. And do I have a crit attack? I think I do, right? Paladins get a crit attack, don't they? 
Yes, they do. Yes. So I hit him again. Um, okay. Because that was a bonus action. So. All right. Go ahead. 28, which is a critical hit, uh, dealing 11 damage. First on the first day. Great. Uh, did you want to now, can I smite? smite on this? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Is that a bonus action? No. No, just... I can divine smite, and that, and that is not. So it's 2d8 extra damage. Actually, because you crit, damage. it's 4d8 extra damage. And I'm going to do that at level two, so I get five d eight damage. All right. So you knock off the two spells I just used. Right. And roll five d eight. Nineteen. Well, that hurts a lot. 19 plus 11 is 30. 36 damage went on on him. Yeah. So he is bloody. And 19 of it. Yeah, 19 of it is. Uh, Radiant. Radiant, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, he's. Yeah, bloodied. Uh, the Drow Mage, whose turn is up yeah. next. I'm guessing that's the end of your turn, right? Yeah, Silas will just kind of stand in front of the two of them a bit with a shield up and ready to block. Right. Just deciding which one Actually, of these I want to do. All right, use bonus action. All right, let me um, let me quickly just pull this over here. Yeah, if I could, would have got that blue off. That would like that would have been great. Yeah, um, but he has a bonus to his uh, wisdom saves. Mm -hmm. He casts Cloud Kill. Uh, I need everyone to make me constitution saves, except I don't think Bastion needs to do that because, Bastion, are you immune to poison damage? I'm not immune to poison damage, but I can choose not to breathe. Okay, uh, it is a poisonous fog. If it's something like... Uh, stinking fog or it's cloud whatever kill. those are skin contact okay so yes please make me constitution saves then um, alright are affected even if they hold their breath yes okay. so, so roll 20 kicked me out of roll 20 and now won't load okay I will it's been giving us a lot of problems too yeah. you know your stat is no, my what is your con stat. So I, I, can, roll for you. I can go into his character and click the button. Hey, Matt. Yeah. I shorted myself damage because I didn't use sneak attack on the first attack. Uh, do you want to roll your sneak attack? Do you mind? Um, yes, I do. <laughs> okay. You forgot. Okay. Cool, cool. <laughs> as for poison though I do have advantage on poison saving throws as well as resistance to poison damage alright uh, so I'll ro I so will we'll take the better of the roll uh, it'll be con save so you pass anyway okay so the DC for this is uh, 
four. Four. <laughs> it's, four. It's fourteen. Um, <laughs> Darn. So anyone that got lower than fourteen, this is what happens. So um you take 5d8 poison damage, roll 5d8, 27, uh, half would be 13, uh, yes, alright, okay, and basically when you, um, when you start your turn there, you also need another constitution save. Okay? Yeah. Um, and you see the area that it's in. He's done that. That's his turn. It's Bastion's turn. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before that happens, um, I'd like to use... Can I use Channel Divinity at any time or only on my turn? Uh, on your turn. On my turn only? Okay. That was 27 damage from the cloud? 27 poison damage, yes. Um, it is a half damage to Bastion. However, he takes another half, so he takes six damage from it because he's resilient to it. Uh, Dawn's actually immune to poison. Really? He has a land stride, the druid ability. Ooh. Love it. Um, I okay. So as the thing I want to do, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast Hellish Rebuke on that uh, on that mage. Absolutely. Yeah, he's gonna make a deck save. He failed. So he's taking two d ten. Do you want to roll that? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, he is not looking healthy. Which, which uh... That was this guy? No, it was this guy here. Mage. Oh. Okay. It is now Bastion's turn. I know that you don't... You're not in Roll20 at the moment. I actually am. You are? Reloaded. Perfect. Yes. Happy day. <laughs> Uh, sorry, guys, for so, the technical difficulties. So, things that I'll need to know is Bastion's health was updated. He said he took six damage, but he's showing that he took seven damage. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to add on an extra 10 HP uh, due to aid. Actually, four extra. Fun. All right. Bastion will chant, throw his arms out to the side, and he will cast Gust of Wind. Ooh. Very nice. As soon as I open it up. Um, which effectively blows the. Uh, which way? Which way do you want to blow it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would be fun to blow it towards him, but I think the most effective way is to blow it to the southwest, uh, just to get all the fog removed from the party. And how far does it move? Let's see. Line of strong wind, six feet long and ten feet wide, blasting in a direction you choose the spell's duration. Fifteen feet. That's each creature. It disperses gas or vapor and extinguishes candles, torches, and such. All right. So it's not just moved, it's dispersed. Bye-bye. <laughs> However... Bastion turns back to whoever casts that spell and gives them a rude gesture. Very nice. Um, good. Uh, yep. So you cast Gust of Wind for an action. Anything else that you would like to do? 
Bastion will move to engage the spiders, holding his mace out and his shield to the side. They will act last. Okay. Uh, so, where are my spiders? Here, spiders. There they are. Um, actually. The one that's up here will stay here. Uh, he will try to cast web on you. Who for you? On Bastion. Mm -hmm. So it's plus five. Does 17 hit you, Bastion? That does not beat Bastion's AC. All right, so the web doesn't affect you. And then two of them are going to try to bite you. None of that hits you. One of them finds nothing but metal. He sidestepped. Um, so that's their turn. And Don, it's back to you. Hmm. Give me a second. Oh, I sorry, I have the drider too. Um the drider also goes last. Because he was summoned in, she was summoned in. So one second, sorry, while you decide what's happening. Um I do 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 think that I will move 30, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 to here. And I'm going to attack Silas uh, three times, twice with a long sword and once with a bite. Um, on this thing? Yeah. So it's a drow that's growing out of a spider's back, basically. Um. And then the bite is the final one. So we've got an 18, a 9, and a 22. So only the 22 hits. Alright, so that is its bite. And... And it has... Yeah. So the D4 is piercing damage and the rest is poison. Wonderful. So one piercing and nine poison. Now you can go, Don. You are casting Flaming Sphere, and where do you want it? Don is going to drop it on top of that spellcaster. How about that one? Okay. Like on top of it? Or yeah, he, he'll conjure it and then ram that caster with the sphere. Okay. So it is... Right where it's at. Good. Yep. And what I'll do is... Uh, I will... Uh, the ephemeral vapors from the disintegrating hailstone wisps together, then with a twist of his hand, vortex together and burst into flame, which charges forward, 
into the face of one of the spellcasting drow. Inspiration for that very apt description, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's it for Dunstan. All right. Uh, he needs a dex save, doesn't he? Yes. Or she. She rolls an eight, so she takes full damage, which is eight. Very nice. Um, Felice. All right. Uh, Felice fires her bow. She gets two shots at that guy right there. All right, the resilient priestess. No, this one. Oh, the, the mage. mage. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. Um, he right. has yeah, he has mage armor on. You still manage to hit him for ten, instantly killing him. Bye bye. Sweet. Well, in that case, I will fire my second shot at this person right here. Okay. I don't know what to do. Um, uh, only 11. Uh, only, no. Yeah. No, you okay. will not hit her. And then um, I will uh, change my position a little bit. Move, like, over here. <laughs> All right. Very nice. Thank you. The Drow Warrior, whose turn it is now. Um, He's taken a lot of damage. Uh, is going to attack Silas twice with his short sword. Come at me, bro. Plus. First one will hit, um, and you will need a constitution save, please. Okay. Alpha scrolling, alpha scrolling. Don't screw me. That was 14, you said before. Uh, yes. And I got 15. So you only take the piercing damage from that, which That's is seven. seven. That is what he can do. Uh, and you know what? Um, he will then go ahead cast darkness. Is his turn. It is the resilient priestess's turn. She's got fire near her. She's going to move away from the fire. Uh, she's going to go here. Spider, giant spider. Okay. Um, so the resilient one. Right. She will mm. I think she wants to Just sort of seeing what we've got here. I think she wants to mass cure wounds, actually. So she's going to cast mass cure wounds. Uh, we have to change that to cleric to get those 
spells. All right, and it's going to be 3d8 plus. She heals 17 damage from the Drow Warrior. She heals 17 damage to herself. As the Drider hasn't taken damage, the Mage is dead. Didn't the Drider take damage from the Hailstorm? Um, huh. Let's see. Sorry. I think it did, yes. Try to try to try to try to. Yes, it did. So it also gets healed for 17. It just didn't look like it. It still had a lot of health, and I'm like, um, maybe it didn't, but it did. So, yes, that's thank you. Um, so that is that. Resilient. Yes. So she does that. That is her turn. The other one is going to uh, let's see where are we ba, 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 ba. I think she's going to cast Insect Plague Insect Plague uh, apparently that's a Warlock spell Where are you? Is it a druid spell? <laughs> Insect plague. Yes. Um, all right, and she's gonna. It's a twenty foot radius. So the same area, I think, um, as before. So, uh, let's say that. And everyone in there, please make me constitution saves. Make a what? You uh, faded out there. Constitution saves, please. Is this poison? It is. No. Not poison. DC for a Drow Priestess is 14. Okay. Um, for those that got under 14, it is going to be uh, 14. 4d10, so it's going to be 19 piercing damage or 8, sorry, 9 if you succeeded. And also, the area is difficult terrain. And basically, swarming locusts fill the area. So that is her turn. Um, and interestingly, um, something that anyone, especially Don, will be able to tell uh, will be that she is actually concentrating on two spells at once, Don. <gasps> Gasp! Uh, Lana, it is your turn. Yep, indeed. Um, I know... Pretty much what she is now doing is she is engulfed in darkness, and about as soon as, or pretty much in that moment of shock, she's now being bombarded by locusts. Yes. And so she, um, just trying to read my notes real quick. So she's going to back up, um, it like in kind of that utter shock for a moment. Um, more and like at first she was going to cast her firebolt cantrip just to kind of see if she could create 
and or like see something for a moment but when the locusts start battering her she's just kind of stumbling um and so uh, i'm gonna have her stumble down that away um and then when she gets out and kind of gets her bearing of like wait what uh she not being able to see any enemies will continue goodness which way would i like her to go oh she probably see just see dawn she'll make her way towards him and let's see and it's like oh there's police like what is going this is crazy but she's uh trying to keep her eyes peeled for uh any sight of the enemy since yeah she so she'll have her action ready if she sees anyone who um approaches her enemy wise she will attack and she has her dagger ready all right, so at the end of your turn, I'll, I need you to make another constitution check because you are still in the insect plague. Uh, so you take half. So He takes no damage. No damage, yeah. Uh, is that because of evasion, though? Yes. Evasion, I think, only works on dex. Let me double check. Let me double check that my rules are right. Let me double check. Evasion. Um, right, though. You are correct. Yeah, Dex so, saves Dex on saves. area. So you, you will take... Yeah. So you will take nine. As uh, insects are continuing to play that area. Chance is still unconscious. Because he's still poisoned. Silas, you can't see right now. And I can't hear you right now yet. Hello? Hello. Weird. Anyways, uh, no, no wonder I know he was saying, answering the things I was saying. Um, <laughs> I just didn't know why. This was like, all right. Um, fantastic. Yeah. So because he's not dumb, I'm just gonna take a step forward. The guy was there before. He's got to still be there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, he takes a step forward and steps over Chance's body to find his friend again, and not a whole bunch of bugs. Indeed. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna move here. Sorry. So, you know, I just went around him so that doesn't create a chance of I mean, an attack of opportunity. Correct. And I am going to... Uh, Alright. I'm going to attack him. Give my scimitar again. Okay. Um, so, what happens is... You attack, and he mm-hmm. actually lifts his uh, weapon, not his shield, and parries it away. At a twenty-two. Yes. Um, he can only do that parry once a turn. So effectively, you would have hit him, but he uses his reaction to parry. Wonderful. Um, all right, well, then I'm going to attack him again. Very good. This is going to work out well, guys. I can see this. Ooh, no. Uh, Man. Yeah, you know, you strike again, but his shield is up too. (laughs) He's just turtling and, uh... Yeah, apparently uh, this guy's got some panache. Um, so that is what it is. Unfortunately, you don't land a hit. Um, um, so as a bonus action, I'm going to... So this was still just five feet, right? Because I only went around him. moved right. yeah because I could pass through a space in theory 
You know what I mean? Um, uh, but technically, you can't. You'd have to make an opposed check. So it's only halflings yeah. that can freely move through any yeah, yeah, spaces. Yeah, 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 right. So, so then it would be one. So I move ten feet. Um, I'm gonna disengage as an as an uh, bonus action because I'm a rogue as well. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to. And I would shout out, um, apparently this isn't a winnable fight. I suggest you retreat. <laughs> um, all right, so that's what you say in common? Oh, yes. I want to say it in the language that I don't believe they know. <laughs> he doesn't think so, but, you know. Okay. What language do you use? Well, I said in common. They learned okay. this as well. It doesn't mean that they know common. Yeah. They're far enough away. Um, yeah, so they don't understand you. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but we have a major problem because our guide is on the ground. Yes, in the darkness. <laughs> yeah, we can't see our guide. And there's a whole bunch of insects. And in fact, he would have taken fight. some more damage because the insect plague. So, you know what? Uh, there's going to be... So that's... Oh, there we go. Yeah. So he's not only unconscious, but he's also getting battered. <laughs> um, very good. So that's you, Silas. All done. Bastion. Actually, actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up right here. All right, I'm sorry. That's fine, Bastian. Yeah, I want to be in. I want to be in ten feet with him. With him. All right. So, which of the two priestesses seems to be concentrating on two spells? Uh, this one. Enough. Bastian will stomp his feet, and he will cast Shatter with his divine, um, his divinity. Okay. So, and that is what save again am I making for that? 16 con. Con. She has plus four. You got a 23, so you do half damage with it. But you maximized it, so it's 24 halved? Correct. Alright. She takes 24, and she needs to obviously make a concentration check. And she has got plus 4 to that as well. She fails. So both the spideys and the insects go away, but not the darkness, sorry. Darkness is still there. Mm. 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 Okay. There we go. Uh, is that all you would like to do, Bastion? And Bastion will go back into the darkness to find the guide. All right. I'll get the guide. You hold them off. So you'll just like feel around for him? He remembers where he was. Yeah, all right. Cool, yeah, you find him. Grab him, and if I have any movement left, I'd continue to run away. All right, you have movement left, go for it. How far do I have? I have a normal 30 foot movement. So you've moved five, 10, 15. So you can move to there. Or here. 
All right. So Bastion will move down to there, still in the darkness, dragging the guide along with him. Yeah. All right. Cool. You take half, which is eight. Uh, but you don't take any. Cause, uh, what's the con save for? Uh, Don took damage from the uh, earlier spell effect, and I forgot to make a concentration save uh, for my uh, flaming uh, sphere. Cool. Well, it is still up. Is there anything else Bastion wanted to do, sorry? That was his turn. Okay. Um, so the dried art is actually still up, because it's not affected by that concentration. So... It's going to... He's just walking around you there, Silas. Um, I'm going to attack Felice. Hi, Felice. How are you going? Uh, what the heck? <laughs> roll d20. Uh, and it's going to be plus six three times. So the first two are long swords, and the final one is a bite. 18, 20, and 19, Felice. How are you feeling? Uh, not good. Let's see. Whoops. So the damage will be... Oh, gosh. Um... Roll. I think every single... Uh, let me just... Those are, I think. And then long sword. Yeah, they're all hits. Two plus six. Alrighty. So you've taken three plus eight is uh, 11, 22, 21 damage all up. Ouch. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, oh, uh, great. It will then cast Fairy Fire. So Don, Lana, uh, Felice, and... Yes, Don, Lana, and Felice, please make me deck saves. Steven, or oh, Don, you are Fairy Fired. The rest of you are not. Okay, now it is Don's turn to go. Seeing what a powerful that opponent, the Drider is, he's going to uh, try to change its form into something a little less threatening. <laughs> All right. He'll point at it and make a blooming gesture with his hand. Let's we'll see if it, the power of nature takes root. So wisdom, 20 plus, what have we got, two? Yes, two. Eight. Not enough. <laughs> I think that it should be, hmm, how about a toad? A toad? Yes. Okay. Uh... With his other hand, he'll gesture. Uh, well, I get I, that's a sphere of darkness next to us. Um, it is an area of darkness. Yes. All right. Don's gonna move forward then. So he can see those uh, the two drow, and then he'll gesture to the side, sending his uh, sphere of fire to ram into the uh, one up on the uh, ledge. Uh, you can move that. You should be able to. Yep, about to do the roll. Ooh. 
Yeah, that could have been a better roll. I could have, but... Alright, takes three. Very good. Is that all for you? That's it for Dawn. Police! There's a toad instead of a drider. Um, How big is this toad? Uh, it's about a your hand. Toad size. Can I stomp on it? Yeah. Police, grab it! Uh, if, uh, if you stomp, stomp on it, you, you'll revert it to its drider form. Oh, I don't want to do that. Don will explain as you move forward to it threateningly. If you hurt it, it'll turn back into a drider. Contain it if you must. But I... it's going to be like this for a long while. I, uh, in that case, you grab it, Lana. I'm going to do something else. And I uh, fire my arrows at this person over here. Person over there? Yeah, that one. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. 15. Uh, no, you don't hit her. Okay. So what happens is you fire your arrow, um, and it'll just, it'll, it'll land, uh, and just rebound off hidden, uh, hidden armor. You hear a clink. And you understand that she must be wearing some sort of metal armor underneath her cloak. Okay. So I nevertheless fire off a second arrow. Okay. And you still do not hit. And it's wasted. <laughs> All righty. Um, yeah, I, that's all I'm going to do. All right. Um, we have the Drow Warrior who is up. Um, uh, he will come down to here, and he will attack Silas. And it's going to be with two short sword attacks at plus seven each. No, he does not hit. No, not at all. Uh, he will step into the darkness. Uh, you do get an, an attack of opportunity. Opportunity, okay. But uh, it is at disadvantage because he's effectively hidden. No. Alright. Um, very good. That is the end of his turn. The Resilient Priestess. And his one is down here. She is going to... She can't see him anymore. No. Uh, she's going to cast a spell magic on your uh, flaming sphere. This is the one right next to the flame? No, this is the other one. Uh, dispel magic. Let me see the range of dispel magic. Dispel magic has a range of 120 feet. So yes, she can do that. And it says third level or lower immediately ends. So it's third level or lower. The uh, second level spell. So whoop. 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 All right. So that's her turn. The multicaster is going to use her summon demon. Because you know reasons. I need to find a way to do summon elementals one action. Alright, that's what she summons. Uh, enjoy. Lana! I'm 
here. What are you doing? Pausing the moment, picking up that toad. Do, 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 do. Got it. Yes, you do. That's an interaction. What else do you want to do? Um. <laughs> she probably got the note. I guess uh, the one drown person up on the hill. Yes. And you also notice that this guy is here. Where? There. Oh, okay. I had oh, practice. I had not scrolled up. I'm kind of zoomed in. So, wah. <laughs> she it goes to like shoot a firebolt over at the one over here -ish and sees the scorpion one and just uh and still aims like it's kind of like the scorpion looking one kind of distracts her as her fireball shoots wide. I don't think a 12 is going to hit. Um, no, no, it won't. Yeah. So he's like, she takes aim and then realizes, oh my gosh, as she just lets the magic out of her hand. It's like, yeah, it's like, what is that? What the hell is that? Indeed. Where, where did that come from? And yeah, he has a, a a snug grip on the frog or toad, toad, toad. Okay. Chance is still unconscious. Silas. So nice he's been helpful. Um, I'm sorry. Uh... <laughs> no, no, bad. He's awesome. I mean, you're uh, a paladin. You can lay on hands and cure his poison. Condition. I could, but I, but I can't see him right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear Bastion clunking around with him. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. I will allow you to... I, I, to be honest, buddy, I, I'm much more interested in the fact that I only have 25 hit points. Um, <laughs> so I did. I, I, full disclosure, I did say that this campaign would be a little bit harder with the, with the encounters. Oh, oh absolutely, dude. Uh, this is fantastic. I'm, I'm having a great time. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do this. I am going to... Um, Um, I probably just pick her up and that'd be cute. All right, as a bonus action, I'm gonna do this. I'm going to uh, use my insightful fighting, Ooh. and so, and I'm gonna use it on this. Oops, I'm corner again. On this chick right here. So, so she has to make a deception check? Deception check, and I make an insight check that I have, can't get lower than like 18 rounds. <laughs> so I'm, <just> doing... <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, she does have lots to her. She got a 17? Yeah. What is what is the real number? I, I, I get an automatic number of some sort. Hold on. Lots, I'm guessing? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it's 18. It's, right. It's, it's, yeah, that I just have normal. So. Yeah, so uh, I don't think, yeah, it, it would be, yeah. So, no, she, she fights. Right. And then and then I run up here to her. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to attack twice. All right. Resilient priestess, time to meet your demise. Yeah, I'm a slight as bitch. Um, at least I hope so. We will as long as see. they don't have some weird parry, as long as they don't have some weird parry thing. <laughs> Twenty-one is definitely a hit. Uh, do you want to smite? I I do not. <laughs> yeah, I want to smite, and I also want to uh, use my sneak attack. Again, I forgot to do that. Sure, so, absolutely, you can do that. So here's the sneak attack. We'll just do that Ooh, right off the top. Very nice. Okay, Silas is a little angry right now, apparently. 
Um, and then I'm going to use it at just level one. All right. Is that enough, is that enough to kill her yet, or is it not? No. Okay. Uh, those are D8s, so you're already D6s. D8s. Okay, so it's 3D8. Seventeen more. Still not enough. Alright. So and on the second swipe. Mm -hmm. There's another seventeen. 17. Yes, for six damage. She will take it. She is a resilient yeah. priestess. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let me start the fighting. Certain fighting gives me certain fighting gives me. I think it just allows you to use your sneak attack. I use my sneak attack damage no matter what. Yeah, 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 yeah. But still, it doesn't change anything besides that. Yep, go ahead. All right, Bastion. Those are the things. All right. Does Bastion have any idea what's affecting our guide? Sleep paralysis, something else? Poison. It's Kevin. All right, he'll step out of the darkness. Yep. See that everyone's just huddled. Why are you all waiting? <laughs> I'm furiously casting spells as fast as I can, Bastion. <sighs> Bastion tosses the guide onto the ground. I will assist. As he moves around the darkness, <laughs> sees the priestesses, sees the demon, and said, I said enough! As he stomps his feet, and yet again casts Shatter with Channel Divinity maximized on the priestess to the north. Alright. Oh gosh. Uh, even Harv to you instantly kill her. But also, wouldn't that hit the... Oh, no, it's only... Yeah, so she's she's dead. And the demon? Uh, is it an area, is it? A point you can choose... It's an area of effect. Uh, the demon, all right. The, the Chinkali will also make the save, and it's... What has he got? Plus three? Okay. Oof. Oh, geez. So it takes half, but that's still 24, right? Yeah. Yep. Ah! Uh, uh, impossible! The demon remains! The priestess is dead, but it remains! Right. Yep. Let me double check that that is the case, but I am almost 100% certain it is. Uh, Okay, uh, let's say this. Uh, it's gone. I'm totally fine with it staying. It's just surprising Bastion is all. Nope, it's gone. It says, until its summoner dies. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so Bastion does that little rant and the thing just pops out of reality. Ha! As it should be. Yep. Bye-bye. <laughs> um... Is that all you would like to do? Kill two yes. things and one <laughs> one attack. That is Bastion's turn. Excellent. Uh, Dawn, you're up. Mm, dismissed my fireball, huh? Yeah. Looks like Silas has that one priestess. So I think I can do this. Let me work out the distances, though. Wall of stone. So um, my plan, and I haven't measured if I have enough distance of stone to do this, but I'm going to just in fully enclose the Sphere of Darkness with stone. Yes, you have. <laughs> Sorry, that's awesome. <laughs> yes, the entire Sphere of Darkness is enclosed by stone. Do you want to enclose so, it at the top as well? Yes, I can, would like to do that. You can do so. And so it's not... Uh, fragile um yeah he's trapped man actually no that's that's fine i don't have to do anything special because that's exactly 20 feet yeah, yeah he's totally 
totally enclosed by stone. Yeah, and each panel has an AC of 15. Nice. Uh, Don will maintain concentration, just so you know. Of course. Um, very nice. Felice, you're up. Oh, let's see if I can actually accomplish something. So, um, Felice activates her lightning arrow. That's a bonus Ooh. action. And then she takes a shot at this last priestess. Alright. Oh! <laughs> That's a critical hit. That means you get to... Finally. It means you get to crit on the lightning damage as well. There. Nice! Which okay. means it takes 44 lightning damage and wow. 14 piercing. It had 22 life. You just doubled its health. <laughs> and it's dead. <laughs> Bang! <What? laughs> <sighs> Die, bitch! No, but yeah, she's dead. <laughs> There's no well, stopping that. All right. <laughs> and which... you were complaining about not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> we have now. <laughs> Uh, so that ends the battle because there's no uh, there's there's a toad that you can just dispose I, of. I, I've got an idea with the and toad. The, actually, the toad goes away because the drida is unsummoned when the. So unfortunately, the, the toad disapparates. Oh no! Yes. Yeah, so well, I, I guess it. that's easier. Right. But how does Lana react to that? <laughs> so, can we drop this wall of stone? I uh, mean, I could. Uh... <laughs> well, effectively, you win the battle. So, uh... Well, but I might, I might want to talk to that guy. Do you want to talk to him? Well, I can't talk to him. Um, I don't Doesn't know. he get Undercover. destroyed by the wall, though? No, so it's it. Do Donald explained. So it's it's a hollow cube oh, okay. of stone. Um, I just trapped whoever was over there in it. Um, oh. I'm concentrating on the ma nature of magics to make the stone more permanent. But if I stop doing that, the uh, stone will evaporate back into the cycle of nature in about ten-ish minutes. So you can you can hear him banging away at the stone. And you can hear a muffled voice from inside, and in drow. Oh, go oh, correction. I could drop it at any time, but if I focus for ten minutes, it'll stay there forever. <laughs> Do you want to focus for ten minutes? <laughs> that's that's the plan so far. But it sounded like you guys want to parlay. <laughs> what what do you, what do we want to do as a group? We already got the toad. We don't need to parlay with the other. Considering how poorly talking to them went yeah. already. Yeah, and the toad is gone. Yes, the toad is gone. Um, well, why don't we do this? And Silas reaches down and casts Lesser Restoration on Chaps. Okay. He wakes up on 25 health. He's like, uh... Where are those noble warriors that I can slay them all? And he looks around. He's like, where did this wall come from? <laughs> <laughs> you, do you like it, Chance? I, I thought it looked nice. I, it's very nice. It, I made it, it myself. It has the, uh, the warrior that was in front of them inside of it. Well, he has a lot to answer for. Or we could leave him in here forever, from what we're understanding from Don. I, mean, I, 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 I mean, couldn't he dig his way out? Probably eventually, but we won't be here. Uh, I mean, I have no problem with that. Uh, if we let him live, he'll go back to his superiors and report that we killed them. Well, this is not an action that would... Uh, be good for diplomacy. Yeah, agreed. I also don't think killing three of their village people is a good way for diplomacy either, but... Um, I, I'd be more worried about the priest than the warrior. I mean, they are the uh, the priest or the, the top end of their uh, yeah. hierarchy. 
I don't think it make much of a difference to uh, kill one more male to them. Exactly. Um, yeah. While we, uh, what to do next? Uh, shall we examine the bodies? There may be items of interest. There most certainly are items of interest. Looks like a uh, few of you could use some healing too. Especially if we're going to confront that warrior. He seemed to be uh, pretty adept at his trade. I use my, my own healing. I lay hands myself with all my points. Okay. Wow. Um. Yeah, I, I, I felt better. <laughs> I, I could cast something on myself, but I think what you have is probably more powerful. So, if you don't mind, I, I won't say no. My healing takes precisely ten minutes to take effect. By that time, either the warrior will be trapped in stone, or it'll be released. Uh, well, uh, I can just take care of myself then. And you guys can decide what you want to do. But our friend. I didn't catch that, Silas. What? I'm not so upset about leaving him in his own prison. Um, but at the same time, he may give us some inspiration. He's probably just a soldier of some sort, though. I mean, I know much. I bet we didn't keep the priesthood involved in the back. Okay, why the heck is that zero? Uh, probably something's not ready with the spell. Why did that just do zero for me? I'll check it out. It's alright. <laughs> it happens. It happens. It's probably, oh, it's probably because I didn't click myself, huh? Maybe. Let's find your heal wound spell here. Um... Open languages. Where even is it? Um, level two. Okay. Um, so healing one D eight plus. Yeah. Uh, what's your wisdom to here? Uh, wisdom. Uh, ten. So, click it again. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. So, well, yeah, we, we can we can sort that out as far as getting you high level ones and everything later. Um, but for now, um, yeah. Um, very good. So, uh, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Bastion will go around as he remembers that he has the Hunky Dory Greater Renewal, and he will use it once on Silas, Lana, Felice. Good luck in terms of hit points. Okay. And how many? Sweet. All right, so Hi Silas is healed for 19, Lana for, and Felice for 17. Thank you. Very nice. Oh, it feels a little better. Okay. Thanks so, uh, to the giants. So now next, the next thing is that uh, how do we? Deal with this warrior. We leave him in his prison, or are we off. 
Well, effectively, you've looted him, so... I've basically given you his loot, because effectively he's defeated. So you can question him if you like. I say we question him. We have members in our party who can understand him. We also know If worse Elvish. comes to worse, there's enough of us. Yeah, I also know Galvish, right? Yeah. Which I can talk to him directly. Um... Yes, I think we can communicate with him. So, I look at Don and I say, drop it, and I have my shield and my rapier directly at his throat. Alright, he chomps down on his tooth, and he dies. Oh. And his mouth starts foaming with white. Well, that was simple. Cool trick. Uh... Question, a little bit gruesome, but is there any special teeth in any of the priestesses? Uh, yes. Um, do I think that's a poison? Uh, yes. And is he dead, dead, or is he, or is he unconscious? Uh, cyanide. It is cyanide, okay. So lesser restoration will have stopped. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got to raise, <laughs> if you've got to raise like, dead spell, you, that'll work. Run away from me, <laughs> uh, Bastion rubs his hands together and he says, "I can bring him back. It'll cost nah, you gold, nah. though." <laughs> I thought it would cost us diamonds. <sighs> so diamonds the... buy gold. <laughs> The, um, both the priestesses, uh, have, a ho uh, less than hollow, like, hollowed out teeth with, uh, stuff in them. It would require a survival check to, uh, to retrieve those without damaging them. I'm going to assume... You know what? Unless someone else stops Bastion, Bastion will try this. Alright. Survival right. check? Yes. I will cast Guidance on myself before doing this. Of course. <laughs> no! <laughs> you, you try yeah, and remove the first right. tooth and it just explodes in white acid. Uh, acid Bastion shakes his hand off tries to rub it off on the priestess's clothes as its mouth melts Bastion try not to get hurt over there <laughs> so do we know right off the cuff that this is an amulet of spiders or in the belt of webs or what I have to no uh, that's just what they're called so you would have to identify them yes so here's what they do you want to just have it identified because that is just not so um, yeah amulet of the spider you can conjure animals once per long rest to summon three giant spiders and you may concentrate on two spells at a time while wearing the amulet and the belt of webs may cast the spell web at will and may concentrate uh, concentration checks gain advantage while wearing this belt. Where did the webs come out of? The belt. There's a little uh, there's a little claw. Just like a real spider. Comes out of your butt. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> you just have to moon everything, that's all. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh do I mean? Do any of us have identified? Is that even something that we can do? I don't know. Do you? Yeah, that the police might. Maybe. Mm, maybe. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if what I have would work. Um, I have. Uh, where am I? I don't what have the identify spell. I do have um. The relic thing relic hunter it's not really a relic so uh no no they 
I don't know. It's... I don't think. I don't think what I have would. So at the moment, it's just what? a magical belt uh, that you can attune to, and a magical amulet that you can attune to. What about history checks? Uh, no. Unless you're familiar with Drow history, I would give you a guide. A, I, I would give you disadvantage. <laughs> well, Felice could do a history check. Yes, yes, you could. Um. Uh, you know what would be better though? Um, religion would be better because actually mm. these are religious um, pieces. Ooh, who's our religious expert? Uh, hmm. probably. If only there was somebody that had any Not Lana. with a greater power. Gee, I wonder who that might be. <laughs> <laughs> so Silas does take the two pieces and kind of looks at him, talks to the White Phoenix for a few minutes. He comes back with that information. Question mark. Um. In less than succinct words, yes, you can summarize what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can sort of tell a story about um, uh, about uh, where they were created. Um, for some reason, you have knowledge, or the White Phoenix, let's say that one of the incarnations of the White Phoenix was actually a drought. And, uh, oh, wonderful and was around in the time that these were created. Um, they were created as uh, a part of the defense against uh, the Umbra um, and were entrusted to the highest ranking spellcasters of that time. However, they've been passed on since then. How these drow have come with them out here, you have no idea, which is further vexing because we've already figured out that one, they were trying to not tell someone else that they were here. Two, they were in, in the daylight, in broad daylight out here uh, three, they're not of the snake worshipping or serpent worshipping cult uh, of the drow. Um, three, they have these ancient drow magical items that were created for the defense of their cities. This all seems very, uh, <laughs> very curious. Yeah, it's very strange. Um... Well, he would take and hand the belt to 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 Don. And say, if you still have an ability to tune to this, I think it'd be good for you. I'm very sorry, I'm keeping the uh, amulet, seeing that I wasn't good enough for anything else. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right. So Silas, you'll be able to concentrate on two spells at a time. Don, you'll be able to have advantage on concentration checks. And I can make those cool ass spiders. Indeed. Let's do that thing. That sounds dope. Once a day. So, once a long rest, rather. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll word it right in my sheet. Yep. Put it in the room. And I'll get um, your handouts after the session. So, we have about 15 minutes before you guys have to go, maybe 10, so that you guys can have a quick stand up and stretch and whatever. Um, okay. The legitimacy of that, Matt, is that we really, really don't start till eleven thirty. Oh, uh, my time. You know what I mean, so, but you know, we like to try to get there as quick as we can. All right, you so I mean? yeah, so, we got a little bit of time. So, yeah, we got a little time in front of us. Yeah. Um, Chance um uh, sort of says as much as you figured out that like these, these must, these particular drow must be on a special, a special mission. They may. And in fact, being that they poison themselves, priestesses poison themselves, this doesn't seem, or were going to poison themselves, this doesn't seem uh, kosher to him. He's like, I don't, I don't think that this was an official designated mission. They were here for some other nefarious purpose. Um, 
So we already kind of figured that out, but he'll sort of confirm it as much as he can. And um, we, because we've gotten past there, uh, we are able to get to the last area here. Um, so let me grab all of our tokens and take us to the final map for today. Now, can we can we say that we are um, attuned to these things, or do we have to? Yeah, yeah. It only takes an hour. Okay. Do we have a short rest as well? Yeah, if you would like one. Do we? Question for the party. Uh, Don's fine. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, I'm, I'm pretty good and stuff. Well, yeah, she's good to keep going. I think this is gonna be, I think this is gonna be a good old talk. And I got something for this. Alright, so, uh, you should now be on the next Screen, hopefully. Yeah. And Matt, and Matt, can you make the turn order go away, please? I sure can. Thank you, sir. It's so demanding. <laughs> oh, just in the middle of the screen. It was like, <laughs> annoying. <laughs> um, so you see a large clearing, plenty of trees around, and you see a cave. I see a cave. Like Are there that? drow inside? Are there drow inside? Uh, give me a moment, says Don. Commune with nature. Alright. Gain the knowledge of three facts of your choice. What would you like to find out? So, Don is curious about that cave. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Is it a cave? <laughs> yes. So, Don's interested in uh, buildings. Buildings? The uh, powerful celestials phase, fiends, yes. elementals, are in their drive. And the prevalent plants, minerals, animals, or peoples. Okay. Uh, there is a gargantuan celestial being inside. Um, plants, minerals, animals, or peoples. There, uh, this is as close uh, as a carbon copy of the plane of Lamania as potentially possible. Inside, you will find um, especially um, silver and cold iron uh, deposits. Um, and... Your other question was, there's no animal, well, there's animals around, but nothing of note. Minerals, I've told you. Plants, uh, again, many of the plants, the, the trees around this grove are not native to Zendric, nor are they native to Eberron. They are native to Lamania. And buildings, uh, there are no buildings around. Just uh, people, people. No, there are no people. Just a gargantuan celestial being. All right, Don, Don will share the party it's exactly like that. He'll say the gargantuan celestial being for the last and say it like that. Just oh, things, things, things. No people, no animals. Oh, and one gargantuan celestial being. Celestial. Well, we are of good intent. What would we have to fear from that? Uh, it's probably one of those uh, fallen angel uh, whose name escapes me at the moment. Radiant, Orion? Radiant Idols. <laughs> radiant Idols, thank you. Uh, let me... Uh, the, very easily could be a Radiant Idol. The ground will shake. 
and after a minute <gasps> oh it's so pretty Or maybe, or maybe Don's just wrong. First thing out of Wong's mouth. Dream rainbow serpent. This is the Andron Jingy. Uh, Chance is instantly on his knees and he's looking down at the ground and he is not uh, looking at the creature. Felice uh, immediately follows his cue. Are you two okay? Yeah. Well, he seems to know what he's doing, so I'm just following his lead. He's, he's also a bit weird sometimes. So. <laughs> the yeah, but he's these things and we haven't. A booming voice um, comes from the creature in Celestial. Does anyone understand Celestial? Don Circlet does. Cool. Well, Ooh. you are able to activate your Circlet as it begins to speak. So you catch the sort of second half, I suppose, of what it was saying, but effectively I can give you most of it. And it will say, uh, you have come to very sacred place. Many millennia ago, when the plain of Lamania was first coterminous with Eberron, this uh, was the location of the gateway that was created. Never again has that particular gateway opened. I welcome you Is Don translating this? Yeah, Don Don'll share with the party. He'll also gently remind them that just because he can understand it doesn't mean he can speak it. <laughs> All right. Uh it will then say uh I am Andron Jingy, the ancient one and creator. Why have you come here? Hmm. Well, okay. So Silas was step forward because he's a very forward person. Um, and uh, do you we'll understand speak. common? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna first speak to it in Elvish. In Elvish. Mm-hmm. Melvin, um, and I will say the reason that we have come will become much more apparent if you understand me. The an answer uh, comes into your head, not in Alvin, but in Common. Okay. Uh, and I will say I don't understand you. All right, so I'd speak to the same exact sentence in in common. All right, <laughs> it understands common. Okay. So um, what what did you say, what did you say? And I say, um, I am Silas Phoenix. I am the champion of the White Phoenix. We mean you no harm, by any means. But we are on a a quest. To fix what's going on with the land of of Eberron, right? Is that right? Sorry. Um, and uh, may we have an audience? I think we're having an audience right now, Silas. <laughs> yes, but if we don't ask it for an audience, it may just kill us. They're done. I don't. <laughs> it it says. Uh... 
I don't intend to harm you either if indeed your intentions are pure. You can speak all you like. I will listen. Do you have reason to believe that the Yuan T are trying to open a, a gateway to Dal Kor? This I have sensed. Uh, we've come to to learn of and to stop it. And he says, uh, I only know of one way. I would need to swallow the gateway. Mm. Sounds unpleasant. <laughs> yes. It could be very small. We haven't found it yet. Absolutely. Well, it's very large. Um, so Maybe that's a trick. Maybe we have to find it while it's still small. There you go. Uh, so this tree over here, is that a dead tree? Uh, it yeah. A it, it's a tree that you don't recognize. It's actually got green glowing baubles down its uh, branches. Oh, no. I don't want to touch that. Um... I was just looking because it kind of looked like a dead tree, you know what I mean, down here. Um, so I was going to. Uh, it certainly does it. not look dead to you. Uh, in fact, um, you can see um, that it has almost a wet texture to it. Almost like it's sweating. Hmm. Yes. Um, so, is. Okay, my intention is, is that, you know. It, it said something else about us being good and pure. Pure, um, it said. Not good. Yeah, pure. Um, and is there anything that I see that is decomposing or dying in this area? Uh, no. No, there is nothing um, that is decomposing or dying. Because I had a fun thing that I was going to try to convince you into doing something different with it, but it's not going to work. Um, you know, I step a few more steps further. And I reiterate to it, I say, yes, I, again, am the champion of the White Phoenix and have given up all of the demons inside of me for that. And I can say as far as me, my heart is very pure at this time. Very genius. <laughs> it says uh, out aloud. Maybe not as pure as you would like. No, it's still some darkness in me. You're correct. <laughs> Purer than me! But she said our intentions. Great one. We we have reason to believe that the ev efforts of the Yuan T are causing horrific nightmares in children of uh, Eberron. This I have and sensed. That's where our concern lies. We, two in our party's children are directly affected, and we want to end this so they're no longer suffering. Not to mention the untold horror that would happen if Dalcor had a permanent portal to this plane. Absolutely. This must not happen, he says. And if that were to happen, all that we know, all that is alive, right. would be alive no longer. Do you know where the Yuan T are making this portal? I or do. perhaps a woman? We, we know that there's a woman they're allied with, a, a lich, perhaps. She says, uh, I do not know where the gateway is, but I know how you might find it. You must seek the destiny's arms. Sorry, the destiny arms. Is it something we could bring to you? Yes. Uh, and what would happen to you if you were to devour it? I 
would not devour the destiny arms. They will lead you to the gateway. Uh, you mm -hmm. will not be able to bring the gateway here. However, I can make my way to the gateway, for I know the secret ways. There are four ancient artifacts. The Glaive of the Darkest Depths, the Maul of the Glacial Heights, the Spear of the Desert Winds, and the Staff of the Magma Falls. With these four relics combined, you will find the gate. Fantastic. You speak and the speak. destiny arms will help us find those relics? The destiny arms are those relics. So they're weapons. They're legendary weapons that have been long well, lost well, to history. Well, will we be able to wield them if we find them? You will be able to bring them here to me. You will be able to wield them, yes. I do not know how effectively you will be able to use them. They are powerful in their own right, but when combined, yeah. They can take okay. us to where we need to be so that I can just so that I can swallow the gateway and stop this from happening. You spoke of a woman, a lich. Is this correct? Perhaps. Yes. We're not sure. Hmm. Yes. She has a jade phylactery. A jade phylactery. Approach, young one. Is she speaking to? Whoever. Well, I guess I've done the most, uh... Emerald Black. I think she's the youngest. Mm-hmm. Who is? Me. Um, how old is who? The least trembles a little and approaches. She's just in awe of this creature. Find amongst my scales and feathers one of pure emerald and pluck it from my body. Oh boy. Okay. I do as she instructs. All right. Make me a strength check. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. You you do succeed. <laughs> it takes you about Ten minutes, <laughs> but you do succeed. Um, upon holding this, uh, the creature says, "Now, each of you, please gather around in a circle and place the scale in the middle." Passion follows suit. He says, uh, I will now cause you to sleep. Do not be afraid, for you will dream not nightmares, but you will dream of this woman of the Emerald Phylactery. This will only work on willing creatures. Are you all willing? Yes. All right. Uh, you will fall asleep and you will dream a dream. I dreamed a dream. Uh, and you will get... Uh, a condensed backwards history 
of this woman. And I guess that <laughs> the most recent uh, things that the that the scale can reveal to you uh, that are not hidden uh, is that uh, the emerald phylactery was indeed hidden. It's not able to show you the location of it. Uh, you are able to see a face that you do not recognize of this woman. She looks old, but not as ancient as you might think. Uh, you think that she looks younger than she is, I guess. Um, but she still looks old, so she must be very, very old indeed. Uh, you see a coven of three hags. This might ring some bells. Um, you see a banner, which is an emerald claw. You also see the banner dripping with blood. And then it goes back in time several millennia uh, to a dragon uh, who had a relationship that was not sanctioned and who birthed into the world one Elandis Vol. Some of you might know her as Mistress Vol. Mm -hmm. Or Lady Vol. Of mm -hmm. the Emerald Claw. Of the Blood of Vol. <laughs> and then you wake up. And you know that she is the woman who is in league with both the drow and the yuan -ti, and that it is her uh, machinations that are in play. So when they wake up, Bastion will turn to them and they'll say, oh, you've awakened. Uh, out of character, Bastion's not able to sleep due to magic. Sure. Uh, what did you see? They're able Ooh. to summarize it. <laughs> yeah. Vol. Yep. Well, that gives us a name. Maz is kind of slowly processing through it. <laughs> Especially because Lana's kind of dealt with this before. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah, 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 you broke up. We didn't hear that. Uh, like Lana's dealt with. Well, a few of us have dealt with uh, Miss Vol before. I've dealt with Vol. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm trying to remember. Me as a player is drawing a blank, but it's like. What? And the hags, of course, like those mm -hmm. damn hags. <laughs> what are they doing? Yeah, right now? We, we slaughtered those girls. Um There's more apparently. Yes. But um, it looked like this vol she's in league with or it's like the drow and the Yuan are they working together or is she playing them? Oh she's she... playing them. <laughs> she's definitely yeah. playing them. Or okay. Lana did what we did and to those hags trigger this? Uh, no. Well, I, I feel like one would be like, I don't think so. Um, in the flashing back of just like, I feel like there was like two paths or something, and it was completely separate. But in for Lana, I, I think she feels like. These are different hags. Would they have gotten that feel, or was were they the hags that they've uh, ex uh, worked, literally dealt with before? Uh, so you will, we will have also seen um, at about the same time in the dream. You will also have seen uh, urns that you would recognize. 
That is so sick. Earns that hold the ashes of the hags we killed. <laughs> Earns that are made of flesh. And it was like that inside there. Yeah, it's those three. We fucked up, Lana. Uh, and, I, and I'd like to leave it right there, if you don't mind. Because <laughs> we kind of got it. <laughs> I mean, it's, a good, it's, it's as good a place as any. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So, yeah, I will, I will uh, you know, p put that with our knowledge for next time that our enemy number one is revealed to be Mistress Vol, um, Ancient Lich, um, and apparently she has some sort of plan uh, to do with what's going on. It's unsure what that is at this stage, what that plan is, but one thing is for sure, at the moment, she is succeeding. <laughs> yeah. Um, Great. All right, so that is the end of today's session. Thank you guys so much for playing. I hope you've had a fun time. And uh, for uh, next time, hopefully that will be in two weeks, and we will resume by trying to figure out where the first Destiny Arms relic is is located and hopefully go to find it uh and my name is bean d and i'm matt in a hat and we will catch you next time